Good morning and welcome back. I am going to be making a project this time that is not for me. I'm going to be visiting my daughter, Jessica, who I made the Chanel suits for. My uh, very, very corporate daughter. And I'm going to make her another outfit. This is the one I'm going to be using. It is a Vogue pattern. Um, and I'm going to be doing a couple different things. First, I will be making the complete skirt, I'm um, dress and jacket out of a single fabric. But before I do that, I'm going to make just the jacket and I'm going to be making it out of this navy blue 100% linen. It's a very soft linen. I've pre-washed it. I've pre-dried it. I just ironed it. It's very soft. It's lovely. It's very drapey. So I'm going to make the jacket out of this because she lives in Arizona and it's, you know, early May and it's been over 100 degrees for a while out there. So we want breathable fabrics. So I'll be using this. I will be using my Bember Grayon for a lining, which is also a very breathable silk-like fabric. So I'm excited about that. So um, since I'm making it for her, I'm not specifically making it for me. We have some similar body shapes. Her, I'm going to need to make it her sleeve. She's a petite, whereas I'm more of a regular. So I need to make the sleeves slightly shorter. Her skirts are slightly shorter. Um, but I have those measurements. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I haven't even opened this yet. I'm going to go ahead and open it and see what the pattern holds. I looked at the pattern and I saw that there's a jacket and that there's a lining that they called for um, three quarter yard for lining for the jacket. So I was just assuming that it was going to be, you know, either the bodice or the sleeves or something. Well, it turns out the jacket is not lined at all. The only thing they wanted you to use a piece of lining fabric was so that you could cut a big bias strip out of it. So I'm probably going to do something different for that bias strip. Um, and that's just to go around the armhole, it looks like. So no Bimber Grayon on this one, just the linen. And um, so yeah, there's that. So I'm going to go ahead and get this cut out. Now my fabric, like I said, I did pre-wash it. I did pre-dry it. I have not made sure that it is on grain yet. And I know before I wash things, I surge the edges so that, you know, nothing unravels. And while I was surging it, I could tell that it definitely was not on grain. So it looks like this side is that, it, that it's like cut like that way and that this is the shorter side. So I'm just going to try to grab a thread, a cross thread here and pull it so that I have a line of travel to go through. Um, I don't know if you can see when you do that, it kind of opens up a little pathway. And I'll just do that all the way across so that then I have a nice clear pathway to cut across and I'll know that it's on grain. Okay, so this is my sleeve piece. And so I'm gonna be shortening it and widening it. And um, I don't know if I've ever shown this. This is my little cheat sticky note that I keep handy. Because when you're altering a pattern several ways, there's like an order of importance. So the first thing is to make sure you have accurate measurements, of course. But, you know, I put it as number one because, as you do. The next thing is dealing with the lengthening and shortening issues. So that's what I'm going to do first. After I get do that done, then you do any curves, like a bust or a darts for, I put bust and bum, you know, the, the back darts, things like that. 
and then you do side width and then you make a sample garment. Technically I'm not, technically this is my sample garment because if this goes well and she likes it, I'll use a better fabric later. But, so the first thing I'm gonna do is they have a line on here that says for petite fold line and they want you to shorten it one inch um, for petite. I, like I said, I'm gonna be shortening it a couple inches. So I'm still gonna make this my fold line here. I'm just gonna stick my ruler on there. I'm not sure why I put this upside down. This is the fold line for just petite, taking one inch out. Just under that, they have lengthen and shorten here. So basically, it's in this general area. I'm gonna put my ruler here on the lengthen and shorten here um, line. Fold the entire pattern in half at the edge of that so I have a nice crease. Okay, so now that I have it folded in half at that fold line, I'm gonna put my ruler here with the edge of it at one and a quarter inches. Try to hold that in place while I fold this back down here and press that crease, okay? So that should give me a fold underneath that is one and a quarter inches deep. And now I'm just gonna get my pieces of tape and place it here. And that is going to give me the length I want. Okay, now to blow out my bicep, I wanna make sure that I keep the cuff the same width. It's kind of a, a very minor bell kind of shape down here and I wanna keep that, but I need to expand it up here. At the very top up here, there's some little dots where the shoulder seam is gonna be matching up. And I'm just going to, first of all, make sure my grain line is straight according to my grid that's underneath it. And then from these, line, these dots up on top, I'm just gonna draw a line straight down, which should also be on the grain line, okay? At this little bullseye, that is the widest part of the bicep, hopefully, and it is about five eighths of an inch down on either side, so where that seam is going to start once it's all assembled together. I'm just gonna get a different pen because I just ran out of ink. Okay, so now I have that. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm first I'm gonna cut this line straight up from the bottom up to the dot for my size. So now that I have that done, I'm going to cut these two lines up to about half an inch from the edge of the pattern. Okay, so with that done, I got a piece of tissue paper from my trash from cutting out all of my patterns. And I should iron it because it's a little bit wrinkled, but I'm just gonna set it underneath and put my pattern back together on top of it. Okay, so um, I am wanting to add an inch and a half in width up here at the top. So what I'm gonna do is line up where this dot is and I'm just gonna tape it to the tissue paper underneath. You cannot see that, it's off camera. Just trust me, I have done that. Okay, and now um, placing it so that the upper dot is on my grid, putting a weight on it so it doesn't go anywhere. If I wanna blow it out an inch and a half, that means from this center line that I can kind of see through here, I need to put this point, this upper point, five eighths of an inch out on either side of it. So I am throwing a pin across the room and I'm just gonna put my ruler on that line at five eighths, draw a little line this way and at five eighths, draw a little line out this way, okay? Okay, so now as I pull these upper two out, I'm pulling it out until this corner lines up somewhere in line this way with that 5 8 inch mark that I just drew. Put a piece of tape there and do the same thing with this side. Make it line up, pulling straight from here where that 5 8 mark is, and that looks about right there. Now, the bottom, I want it to stay where it was. So I'm gonna put the bottom part of these pieces over the top here. Okay, 
like that. Move the camera down here so that on the bottom now, I'm going to pull these apart so that they once again meet up at that center line. And I can see that center line through here. And it looks like right there is the place. So let me get a piece of tape and place it here. I'll put some more in the middle. And then that is my adjusted sleeve piece. You can see from the top to bottom, it's just blown out a little bit up there at the bicep where we really need it. Okay, I got it cut out. And one surprising thing in the cutout is for the collar piece, you only cut out one. I think this is the first pattern I've ever done where the collar is just a single layer, no interfacing, no top and bottom. It's just one single layer that's hemmed around the edge. So that's interesting. And it looks like we're going to be doing some nice seam work. So even though it is not lined, we're going to have some nice finished edges. So that's good. Uh, what I'm going to start off with is on the back piece. It wants you to stay stitch the shoulders. So let me get that piece down here. Um, I, you know, linen phrase like crazy. And so I am going to be surging all the way around this piece. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do first is clip my notches here, here, up at the top. There is a triangle right up here, um, but that is for shoulder placement, and I'm not going to mess with that right now as far as marking, but since I've gotten all of my, I know, if Gloria, if you're watching this, I'm just throwing my pins back in here. Um, but if, once I get all of my serging done, um, if I want to mark it, I will. Since the triangle for shoulder placement literally lies on that shoulder seam, it's kind of easy to guess where it is because the triangle will be at 5 8 7 inch in and 5 8 7 inch down. Okay, so I have changed my serger thread to black because that's basically all I do. I'm a monochrome kind of serging person. So I'm going to go ahead and serge all the way around this piece. And today we are using my Pearl, my Meister machine. I have not used her in a while, so I've got her going, got her disco lights on, which makes her super bright down here. And she's going to be our go-to girl today. So I have everything surged, and now I am stay stitching at the shoulder line. Not sure if you can see that. I'll move it under her disco lights. Um, at a half inch seam allowance, just a straight stitch going right across the shoulders. Okay, so with her um, surged all the way around. What I need to do now is pay attention to where this um, notch, I couldn't remember the word for notch, that's crazy, where this notch is up to where the triangle is for shoulder placement, which is basically five, eight, seven inch in. Um, and on the instructions, it looks like, it looks like stay stitching, but it's not. Um, I need to add three quarter seam allowance. So a bigger seam allowance by an eighth of an inch than is standard. Um, do a gathering or an easing stitch here. Okay. Um, what I'm going to do is do that finger easing. And basically this is just to build a little bit of ease into the stitch because it's the back shoulder. It'll make it easier to wear, you know, easier for your shoulder to move around. So um, let me go ahead and do that, and I might bring the camera over and show you what I mean. Actually, before I go over there, I want to see just how much ease we need to build in. So I've got my front piece here. Actually, I got this backwards. Let me flip it. So if I'm um, putting together where these notches are going to meet, what am I going to have to ease? And it's only less than half an inch. It's not very much at all. Um, so with that understood, I'm not even going to finger press it because that might build in too much. I'm just going to run a row of stitching, a longer-ish row of stitching, not, not as wide as a gathering stitch, but not tiny, um, at three quarter inch. And then I can just snug the bobbin thread up just a bit so that these will end up the same length. Okay, so with that done, maybe you can see, maybe not, I have a little bit of ease worked in. I'm just going to set this back piece aside for a minute because I need to do a little bit on the front. I'm going to clip my notches 
and serge all the way around both of these pieces with my black serger thread. And then um, I will be back. There is a center front line here, um, but this is meant to just hang open and I am assuming that this is going, the lapel is going to naturally turn because it says center front, it doesn't say fold line. And fold line should actually be going this way and it's not indicated. So I'm not gonna be doing anything special with it because there is absolutely no way to tailor anything because there's no interfacing or anything like that. So we're just gonna you know, let it fall where it may. Um, but I am clipping my notches and I'm gonna go ahead and serge around each one of these pieces. Okay, so now that my front pieces are surged, I need to match up my shoulder seams up here. Let's see if I got the easing correct. If not, I can always spread it out a little bit. And placing that one and this one. Now these are to be sewn at a three quarter inch seam allowance. We're going to be doing a lot of hand finished seams on this one, which is nice, which is nice. So um, this and this over here, I'm going to sew that at three quarter inch. Okay, so now that this is here, I've pressed them open. What I need to do is come in here, turn that edge under. They say three quarter, they say a quarter inch. Honestly, to me, it's just turning it about halfway under. Okay. And I need to go over to the ironing board and press these seam allowances on both sides so that they are nicely pressed like this. Okay, so now that these are pressed, what it wants you to do is, I'm gonna use a matching thread just in case, you know, but they want you to hand baste these seam allowances that are curved under down and put your basting stitches right along the folded edge. Once that's in, you're gonna flip it over and machine baste it just barely on the inside of that basting stitch. So your basting stitch is gonna be your guideline so that you can make sure you catch everything. So that is what I'm gonna do. Let me get this uh, on here. I'm gonna take rather large basting stitches. I'm hoping that once this is done, I'll be able to pull them out um, fairly easily, but I'm using matching thread. Just in case I'm not able to and one of my basting stitches gets caught, it won't be that visible. So I'm just going to go fairly close to the edge just to tack it down like that. Okay, well let's see if you can see my basting stitches here. I know I can, but I know it's very dark. What I'm going to do is run a row of straight stitches looking at the right side, just inside of my two rows of basting stitches. Okay, so now that I have my seams in, I'm gonna come back and try to pull out my basting thread. So I am looking at the right side here and I am going to be matching up the side seams and sewing them together wrong sides together. Okay, so it's going to feel weird, but it, think of it as if you're doing a French seam. Okay, but you're going to sew this right sides exposed, wrong side together at a three quarter inch seam allowance at both sides of the jacket. Okay, so the next thing that I'm supposed to do is trim the front seam allowance to a quarter inch. So just to make sure I'm accurate, oh my gosh, it's so hard to see this. Um, what I'm gonna do is draw a chalk line basically on top of the stitching line so I can see where that is. And then put that at a quarter inch on my ruler and draw another line. And then at this second line, cutting only the front seam allowance, I'm going to trim it down like this. And when I'm all done, I need to go to the ironing board and press both of these seam allowances towards the front. So, oops, hang on a sec. 
So at the ironing board, I'm going to press both of these towards the front this way. Okay, so now that I have it pressed towards the front, what I need to do is we're basically fat, flat felling this. I'm folding the back seam allowance in half and kind of encasing that little quarter inch one. So here's my quarter inch one. I'm folding it over that and putting it down. And what they want you to do, ouch, 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 ouch. What they want you to do is do the same thing where you hand baste right along the edge. Um, I might not do that because I am going to be looking straight at the right side of this, um, whereas before I was looking at the wrong side. So what I'm going to do is very carefully, after I have it pinned, and I will press it before I stitch it, I'm just going to put an edge stitching row all the way down the very edge of this fold here. Okay, I did not mark this circle earlier, so I'm going to mark it right now. It is on the very front, near where that lapel is. And I'm just going to use a little bit more of my yellow chalk because it seems to show up pretty well. So I don't know if you can see, there's a tiny yellow dot right there. I'm just going to put one more little line towards the side. All right, so I'm going to put this here, the similar one on the other side, and I need to put a row of stay stitching between them. It says that it wants you to do it at three quarter inch. Um, so that's what I will do. Three quarter inch stay stitching, which is just straight stitching from here to that point on the other side. Okay, so we're going to be working on the collar now. So I'm just going to cut my little notch here because I need to be able to tell what is the notch side and the unnotch side. And um, they're going to have us hem the unnotched sides. But I need to mark where three quarter inch seam line is. So what I'm going to do is just using my ruler to very carefully as I go, you know what, I'm going to flip this the other way here. Um, mark a th line at three quarter inch. And it's my linen wants to move on its own, so this will be tricky. But I need to have my seam line marked. This is my notch side. It's, trust me, that notch is in there somewhere. Here it is. So it doesn't get it. But the sides and the whole top edge, I need to draw a, a seam line at three quarter inch. And this needs to be drawn on the wrong side. Mine has the same on the right and wrong side. So, you know, I'm just picking one arbitrarily. Okay, so the first thing they want you to do is press under one quarter inch. Well, since this is three quarter inch, if I fold it under and I still have about an eighth of an inch difference between the end, the raw edge of my fold and my mark, I think I'm about right. So I'm just going to kind of eyeball it that way, press under and fold here, here, and this other end all the way around, and then I'll come back for the next step. All right, so I'm going to need to cut off the tip, <coughs> excuse me, and I'm just going to do it diagonally where those two folds intersect. I think that's fine for right now. Um, what I need to do now, though, is turn it in again on that line that I just drew and press it. Um, I'm going to do this part and then this part and then when I come back after I've pressed this then I'll deal with my corner back here at the table. Okay it is the next day. Ooh, and my battery is almost dead so I need to make this quick. What I, I had to take a break, fix a prom dress, do a couple other things, big projects, but I have my, my corners all folded in and I think I'm just going to go ahead and on my sewing machine just stitch it up and over at the very edge here just to make a nice, a nice edge. Um, I don't even know if that's what they are calling for. I really should check. Top stitch, okay, so they want you to baste it first, then top stitch the basting, and then come back and do a second row of top stitching around the edges. 
two rows okay well you know what we're going to do it their way I am going I'll go ahead and hand base this down and I guess that'll make sure that my corners stay nice and neat you know so that's a good thing so hand baste it then machine stitch it near the fold over here and then edge stitch it along the top edge before I run over to the sewing machine, I want to show you I've got it basted and I'm basting it in far enough from the edge that I should be able to run my edge stitches here without hitting anything. So I'll do it along here and then back again over here. Okay, so I've got my double row of stitching there. Here it is on the inside, looking nice. Um, so now I need to sew this onto my jacket and everything about this pattern is a little bit different. So I want to make sure I look at their instructions. So it looks like I need to be looking at the right side of my jacket here. And there are uh, little dots up here about four inches from the very edge of the lapels. And I have some little chalk marks where those dots are because that's going to come into play for lining up the um, collar that we just sewed. Okay, and on the collar there are also some little dots that I have tiny chalk marks on here and here and those line up with the shoulder seams. And I need to put it so that it looks like I am looking at the right side of my collar so the side that does not have the little hem on it and I am just going to match that up so first I'm going to match up my shoulder placement here and over here and then the edge of my collar should match up to where these dots are hopefully the plan at least at this point. So there and over here. That looks about right. All right, let's see what happens when I go to open it up. Um, I have a notch which is matching up, so that is good. I'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way across here. Okay, so once again, they want us to use a three-quarter inch seam allowance and stitch from this side here all the way over to here. Okay, so I have this sewed at three-quarter inch, and the next instruction is to trim the seam allowance of the collar to three-eighths of an inch, and then turn this edge down one-fourth of an inch. And it seems like they're being extremely precise about that for some reason, so... I am also going to try to be, unfortunately it's very difficult for me to see um, my stitching line. So what I'm going to do is just fold it up like this and it's going to give me a little bit of a crease so it'll be easier to see and then I'm going to draw a line or as, well, I can't see this if my fold line if I put my ruler over it. So I'll just do math. I'm just going to do it from the outside edge and at just over a quarter inch from the outside edge I will draw a line and that should give me if it's if it's a fat line just outside of a quarter inch when I go to cut it that should be three-eighths of an inch we're just going to go that way okay so I'm going to trim this seam allowance off like that just the collar part all the way across Okay, so I have this trimmed. This is still full length. And what they want you to do now is fold the top or the very edge over a quarter inch, which is gonna cover um, the top part of what I trimmed off here. Because if this is 3 8 and this is turning down a quarter, um, where I, the seam line's gonna be exposed, but it's gonna be covered over at the top, okay? And they want you to do that all the way around this big kind of weird trapezoid shaped piece and then they're going to have you do it again but we're going to follow we're following their instructions here so i'm going to go over to my ironing board and press this over a quarter inch you know turn the corner do it again turn the corner do it again so when i'm done over here which is turning it 
I believe, yeah. So this is my right side. So I am turning it towards my right side, okay? So I'm gonna end up with a hem that is exposed on my right side, like this, when I'm all done. Yep, that's what it says. I'm not making that up. Um, so it's a little bulky right here where the seams are, because you know we have lapped, flat filled seams and they're very thick, but I don't think there's any getting around that right now unless I trim off some of this in here, and you never know, I might. But the first step is to go ahead and Again, towards the right side of the garment, press over a quarter inch all the way around. Okay, so I've got that pressed under a quarter inch. And now where this seam line is, which is at three quarter inch in, at that three quarter inch position, I need to turn it under one more time. And I'm going to stick some pins in here. Um, right here where I have this shoulder seam that I've, you know, pressed the seam open and then turned it under, it is fairly thick, um, but I think I can go over it. I am going to very carefully trim a little bit of this bulk out from the inside like that. Um, just a little a little bit to get it out of there because we don't need anything extra complicating life there. And I'm trying to figure out if I'm sewing through the entire garment or just this collar piece. Um, you are sewing through everything. Okay. So once I get all this done, I am going to baste it and then we'll just take this step by step. So let me go ahead and just as I'm going through here, when I see one of these seams that has a little bit extra stuff like down here at the bottom, where my little flat felled seam is, I'm going to do the same thing. Just take a little bit off here just so that little narrow hem is not quite as thick there. All right, so um, all the way around, I'm going to be folding it in like this so that the outside edge is at that three-quarter inch in position. Okay, let me go ahead and get all this pinned first. Now when I get to these corners, I'm going to need to trim off the tip and I can see where my crease this way and my crease that way meet and I am going to cut across just below that. Okay, so I have my triangle taken off. So here I have the raw edges folded in. So I'm giving myself a couple inches from the corner to play with. I have trimmed off that first top little corner of it. Okay, I'm going to fold it down about a quarter inch along that raw edge and Holding it so it stays folded in. I'm going to tuck in one side here and stick a pin to hold the that in position. And, you know, keeping this diagonal one folded in, fold the other side in. Okay, and that's going to roughly give me that little mitered corner. They want you to hand slip stitch the little mitered corners to hold them in place. Um, when I, because I'm going to have to baste this whole thing after I have it pinned, just like I did with the collar, you know, with my big light blue thread, because I think that's easier to see. Um, I'll try to make sure that I do something to make sure that that stays lined up while I'm basting it. Okay. Okay. So I have it all pinned and I want to show you making these corners is a little bit tricky because they're not 90 degree angles. We got all different angles going on here. So this first one, it's not bad. Um, but the bottom, this one is a little trickier getting it to come to a point. So I think what I'm going to do is before I base this, I'm going to get some matching thread and a needle and just try to get my mitered corners just set nicely. And then when I take off all of these pins while I'm basting it, any 
extra that I'm tugging or letting loose here, I can work that ease in along the way. That's my plan right now. So I've got it pretty much pinned together here. And so that is my step. Get some navy blue thread and start uh, working on my little mitered corners. Okay, I think I've got this figured out here. So I've got everything basted. Here's my collar and I can tell you slip stitching the mitered corners before you baste it is definitely the way to go, okay? So there's a couple steps. The next step is I am going to stitch it along the fold line, okay? All the way around. Once that is done and I've slip stitched it, I mean, and I've edge stitched it along this fold line, then I press the collar up and then I stitch around the very outside edge, okay? So we'll do that one step at a time, but my first step is to go to my sewing machine and edge stitch it along the folded line here, um, including behind the collar, just flat like this, all the way around. Okay, so with my edge stitching in there, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these basting stitches, at least behind the collar um, right now. So let me just clip a thread here. I think it should come out easily, hopefully. So I can get the rest out later, but what I need to do now is, I'm looking at the wrong side here. Um, I'm gonna be opening up my collar and pushing this little seam allowance, encapsulated seam allowance up. And I'm gonna press this, okay? And so once I have it pressed, then I'm gonna stitch it. This is kind of thick right here, but we're just gonna roll with that. All right, let me go iron this, I'll be right back. Okay, so I went over to my ironing board, pressed this up, okay? And I went ahead and pressed and pulled out my basting stitches all the way around. So now I'm going to edge stitch it, all right? So making sure I'm looking at this side as I edge stitch it so that I can see where this is. And I'm the first time we stitched it, the collar was down. This time we're stitching it, the collar is up, okay? So I'm probably just gonna start like right here or something. No, I'll start in the very back of the collar. That way where it joins, it'll be okay and um, just edge stitch it all the way along here going through the collar also. All right, so just so you can see, this is my edge stitching this way. So from this way, you just see the stitching, but you have the hem of the collar folded towards it. And this is the right side. You can see here, this is kind of a confusing thing because here you have the collar hem going this way. And here you have the jacket, him going this way. And this is the right side. So you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my dress form just so we can see how it all works out. Um, but I wanted to show you on the diagram here, you can kind of see how they have all the stitching lines exposed so you know what we're going for and how the hem is exposed on the outside. That's what that means. So let me pop it on the dress form and we'll see what we have. Okay, let me see if I can get her closer to the camera here so we can see what is going on. Um, if anything, this makes you want to be extremely careful in your stitching. And I'm using linen, which just wants to go everywhere. Um, but, so I have my shoulders uh, right side out, okay? So that is the, this is the correct way to put it so that you have the hem on the bottom for the collar and lapels, but because, you know, lapels do that flip-flop thing, the hem is then exposed on the front down here and around the bottom, you know? It's just a very drapey, comfy kind of thing. And the back is nice and short and cropped and it comes to this little point back here. Interesting, it's interesting. Um, since it is just one layer, it is definitely lightweight and um, 
I'm intrigued. I'm going to say that. I am intrigued. I'm going to leave her up here because the next step is to get the sleeves together. And so I'm just going to go back, do those separately, and then we'll attach them and figure out how this whole thing works. It's like one big puzzle. Okay. So welcome back to another day. Um, I am going to get started with the sleeves here. And it looks like the first thing they want us to do is put it says ease stitch, which is, you know, gathering stitches between the small circles. So what I'm going to do, because it's just easy right here, is I'm just going to put a little mark where these small circles are. Um, but I'm also going to clip my notches and two notches are always the back. One notch is always the front. And I am also going to clip the center top one, which will line up with my shoulder seam, okay? I'm not surging around this because all of the seams, all of the edges of this are gonna be encased somehow. These are gonna be flat felled. This is gonna have a binding. This is gonna have a narrow hem. So I think we're gonna be okay. Um, but like I said, I need to put gathering stitches between these two points. I'll put two rows. Uh, let me mark them on the back here also. I'm going to show you how I'm doing my e-stitches. Um, basically, I have my stitch length set fairly wide. And I'm running a straight stitch, but as I do it, I'm going to do the finger easing thing here. Where I let it bunch up and then let it go. I'm not holding it super, super tight because I'm not too sure how much ease um, I'm gonna need at this point. But by doing it that way, when I pull it off, it already has some ease built into it. I don't know if you can see, it's got some there so that um, it might be able to just set in that way. I don't know yet, I haven't figured that out. If this isn't enough, I can always pull my um, bobbin thread and you know and cinch it in a little bit more but that's just a nice little way to get some ease already worked into the sleeve cap so while i'm over here the next step is i'm going to need to sew my sleeve main seam here and in the directions they just say to sew it so that you can do a flat felled seam they don't give a specific seam allowance but since the other flat felled seam we did on the side of the jacket was a three quarter inch seam. I am assuming that it is the same. So I'm just gonna pin this up while I'm over here and make a uh, three quarter inch seam down the side. And be very careful to make sure that you're folding your uh, sleeve pieces so that you end up with two opposite sleeves. So like on this one, I have two notches clipped on the top. Before I even sew, I'll fold my other one and lay it next to it and make sure that on the top I have, like both of my backs are on the top if those seams are butted up together. Just a way to double check and make sure that I end up with two different sleeves. Okay, so I've got my two sleeves here and I need to figure out which side is the front. This has two notches, so that's the back. So I'm flipping it over. This will be the front side here. It only has one notch. Okay, and what they want you to do is open up the seam allowance and trim the front seam allowance to approximately a quarter inch. Okay, so the front one here, if you can see is short, the back one is still full length. I'm gonna do that to both of my sleeves first. So now that I have it trimmed like this, I don't even know if you can see, there's a shorter and a longer side. I'm taking the longer side, folding it over by about a quarter inch, which is gonna kind of cover over the raw edge of the shorter one, and just press that down first. Okay, so now that that is pressed over, I'm gonna just kind of open up my sleeve here and press it over to get that flat felled seam. And this is the right side, okay? The side that we're pinning and everything, that's gonna be the right side. So I'm just gonna fold it over and pin it into place. 
Um, I'm going to pin both of them, you know, trying to make sure that everything is nice and I'm not pinning all the way through to the back of the sleeve. And then I'll go over and see how in the world I'm going to sew this flat filled seam on my flatbed sewing machine. Okay, so I've got my sleeve pinned. Now let me tell you what works for me is I turn it inside out, okay? So all of my pins are on the inside. Come on, get down. And then when I go to my machine, so like say the machine's up here and I'm sewing through that way, what I do is I open it up so that as I go, it's going to sew in here this way. And eventually when I get to the end, I'm looking through a little hole, but I am able to continue sewing straight through all the way to the bottom. Um, I have done this one. It turned out very well. And so here you can see, hopefully, both of my seams. I know it's dark. I'm so sorry about that. Anyway, I am leaving this sleeve inside out after I get done sewing because I need to hem the bottom of this and it'll be easier with it inside out. So let me go, you know, sew in my deep dungeony dark hole of sleeve and I will be right back. As far as the hemming, what they want you to do, and again, this is the inside of my sleeve, okay? Um, they want you to fold it up three quarters of an inch and I am just going to eyeball it because I think that that's good enough for a sleeve bottom but they want you to fold it up three quarters of an inch and press it and then tuck it in so you have a fold a double folded hem that is approximately the same width as um, all of our flat felled areas and things like that. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and fold it first just with the single fold at three quarters of an inch or so, you know, press it, come back, fold it, press it again, and then um, stitch it. Okay, so I've got it pinned. What they want you to do is hand baste it first and then double stitch it. I'm skipping the hand basting on this one and I'm going to go straight to edge stitching it at the top of the fold. Once I get that edge stitched up here by the fold all the way around, then I'm going to come back and edge stitch it by the edge. Okay, so I'm going to have two rows of stitching going around my narrow hem. Okay, so I hope you can see I have my hem done with two rows of stitching, holding it all together there nicely. I know, dark on dark. So I can turn my sleeve right side out now, okay? Now, I need to cut a binding strip. Um, that pattern piece that I didn't do yet, once you set your sleeve in, they want you to bind it. I'm just going to look in my bias tape thing and see if I can find some navy blue that's a similar color to use. I found a pack of um, wide single fold bias tape and it's a little bit brighter than this is but since it's going to be on the inside around an armhole I think it's okay. The only other option I had in there was some stretch lace, the really wide stretch lace, which would, you know, I could use that to bind it, but I think this will work. So that's where I am going to go. Um, it looks like the next step here is just to set it in with the standard way. So I will get my jacket off the dress form and get that taken care of. Oh, and welcome to another day. I've been fighting with my camera the last 15 minutes because I had no volume and I think, I think I got it fixed. Um, but I wanted to give you a heads up because last night we had to pull last year's calves um, and move them to a far pasture because all the mamas are pregnant and they need their own nutrients and everything like that. So I have a lot of angry cows outside. So if you hear them screaming and everything, they're fine. They're just angry. And in a couple days, it'll all die down, but that is farm life. So I'm going to go ahead um, and get my sleeves set into my jacket. Okay, so I am looking at the wrong side of my jacket, which I can tell because of this up here. And you know what? I am going to be putting one of my labels in the back here just so it'll be easy to tell what is the right side and the wrong side because it's, it's kind of vague. It really is kind of vague. But looking at the wrong side here, I want to make sure I get the right sleeve on. So this is the front. This is the back. So with my sleeve 
right side out. Um, this has one notch here and two notches there. So that is the wrong sleeve. Let me grab this one. And looking at this one. Okay. Looking at this one placed the same way. I have one notch here and two notches here. And threads everywhere. So that means one notch means it's the front. So this is the right orientation. So I'm just going to slip my sleeve underneath here. Start matching it up. I'm going to match up the bottom seam first. And since it's a flat felled seam, it's a little bit trickier to figure out exactly where that is. But it's where the first, the first seam is. So I'm going to pin that together. I have a very, very thick place where they come together because I have a flat felled here and a flat felled there. But we shall make it work. And then up in the very top center, I have my center point clipped and I'm going to match that up with the shoulder seam up here at the top. Okay, now I have notches. I'm going to match those notches on either side. There is going to be some easing all over the place here, so just be warned. Um, let me move it down. So there's easing below the notches, there is easing above the notches, there is easing all over the place. Okay, now where the dot is on the bodice will match up to where my gathering stitches start. So I'm just going to put that there. And that's odd. Huh. That is odd because it looks like matching up the dot on here, on the sleeve to the dot here, um, not much ease, but a whole bunch underneath. So you know what? I'm going to make an exec executive decision and move that a little bit. So I have a little bit of easing on both sides because, um, yeah, I just, I just, it, I would just feel more comfortable instead of having a whole bunch of easing down lower and none up above. But anyway, let me move over to this side, which is more along the front. This is my dot here, and this is the dot on the sleeve. If I pin those together, well, that, that looks a little bit better. Okay, so I have gathering stitches up here on the top I need to pull. Down here on the bottom, remembering that um, well, there's just a whole lot of ease going on here all the way around. Looking back, it might have been easier, honestly, to put gathering stitches from notch to notch instead of dot to dot because of all of the ease that's going on here. So if you ever do it again, put your gathering stitches notch to notch instead because there's a lot to go on here. I am just going to kind of even everything out. Um, trying to make sure that at the point where they'll be sewn and let me see are we sewing it at 3 8 7 inch or 5 8 well they don't tell you what seam allowance to sew the sleeves in place and we are binding them we're not flat felling them so I'm going to assume 5 8 7 inch okay so at 5 8 at this point down here is where I need to have everything matched up. So if the very edges are a little ruffly, that's okay. It's if down below where the stitching will actually be um, that they match up. And I will most likely be easing in on my feed dogs too. But I hope you can see this. All right, so look, if I pull this straight, Get this out of the way so you can see. If I hold this straight, you can see there's a lot of fabric here and not much there, right? Okay. I'm going to fold it in half. And understanding that this linen is kind of a loosey-goosey kind of fabric anyway. But I'm folding it in half with the shorter side on the inside, okay? At the point where they meet in the middle, I'm going to put a pin right there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I'm going to do the same thing on either side. 
all right and that is going to work it all in and at the point down here where the stitching will be folding it and pinning it like this it it makes it more obvious that this is going to work it's just loose on top okay so anyway I've talked enough when you get up to where the gathering stitches that's easy you can just gather them and adjust and everything our goal is to not have any puckers along the top edge so try to be really careful once I get this pinned all the way I am going to hand baste it in place just to hold it um, before I take it over to the machine to stitch it. Okay, so now that I have it basted, I'm gonna go ahead and stitch it. And I have my basting at about 5 8 7 inch. Um, it's in a strong quilting thread, so I can pull it out. Even if I stitch over it, I can clip it and pull it out. That'll be fine. But I'm gonna try to be really careful not to get to any little puckers. And I think a lot of the problem that I had with a lot of gaping and easing that I had to do down here is just the fabric that I was using. I think that on my sleeve, because I didn't serge around it, you know, and if I did, I might not have stretched so much, but I think where I cut that sleeve on the bias with the linen that, you know, is notorious for wanting to go its own way, I think it kind of stretched out a little bit. So you might not have as many easing problems down here as I did, but I'm gonna go ahead, stitch it on, five eighths of an inch all the way around. And what I'm gonna do is um, start, like here's my center bottom seam. I'm gonna start over here near a notch, go past that center bottom seam all the way around, do a double row of stitching here at the bottom till I get to this notch. And what that's gonna do is um, put two rows of stitching at the very bottom where I'm kind of prone to ripping. Okay, so I have my armholes sewn. They give some directions for folding up your binding strip, um, which basically they're telling you to fold in one edge and press it and the other edge to leave out flat. Okay, so I'm just gonna open up one side of it and press one of my sides open. I'll go do that off camera because you don't need to see. And they want you to trim your sleeve trim seam allowance to half inch so well if i did it at five eighths half inch isn't that much you know, i might trim it a little bit less um i might trim it closer to three eighths of an inch but you know what before i do that i'm going to come in here and pull out all of my basting stitches okay so <clears throat> excuse me now that my basting stitches are out i'm going to come back in here and just eyeballing it, I'm going to be trimming it to about 3 eighths of an inch, which means I'm cutting off about a quarter inch, about like that, all the way around both of my sleeves. Okay, so at this point, this is my bottom seam. This is my shoulder up on top, okay? Set that there. And I have my single fold bias tape, this one bias tape, wide single fold. And I have pressed one of the folds open and also at the very edge, I have pressed it over so it's folded. They say 3 8 7 inch, you know, just about that. Um, what I need to do is start pinning this and they want you to pin it on the inside of your sleeve. I'm gonna start it about two inches or so from where the bottom seam line is. I don't want this to join at the same place this is because there's already a lot of bulk going on there. And then um, the raw edge of the bias tape that I pressed open, I'm lining that up with the raw edge of my seam allowance that I just clipped. And I am just pinning my bias tape all the way around. Okay, so I went all the way around and I'm gonna take my tape a little bit past where this folded one is, put it there, and put another pin. So now that is being held in place all the way around on the inside. Now I'm gonna come in and because I'm using this bias tape, um, I'm gonna be sewing at a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around and that should take me to roughly where the fold should be here. Here they come again. 
You know, I always feel bad for them, but I know it's been their best interest. It's just always, you know, the first couple days that it's bad. But all the calves are safe. They all hang out together in the yearling calf pasture so that the mamas can get a chance to recover. So, there you go. That's what I'm listening to. Okay, so now that it's sewn on this way, what I need to do is finish it off. So, uh, this is that joined area. I'm just going to fold over the underside one first. And then this one that has the fold and try to make sure that they line up pretty well here. Now, I'm not going to press this first. I'm just going to kind of, with this part held in place, I'm just going to fold it over and um, probably starting right here so that at the very tail end I can go over this whole thing right there without, you know, having to stop and start in the middle of that big join, you know. But I'm just going to start here and I'm going to edge stitch it, which is still in the seam allowance and fold over my little um, bias tape as I go. I've already done this side and I love it. I love it. I think it turned out great. I can tell you this is an amazingly secure armhole because I have my regular stitching, which I have twice at the bottom. Then I have a row of stitching, you know, just barely inside of that where I did the first row on here and then another row of stitching on the outside. So I have three, maybe four different rows of stitching here, plus a totally enclosed seam allowance. So this, yes, this is a very secure armhole. And if I look out here, it does not have puckers. It's nice. Um, once I have both of them done, I'll probably go over to my ironing board and put my sleeve cap pressing mitt in here. Uh, here and just press it so it'll be nice and form-fitted. But yeah, I love it. I think it's great. Okay, so I am going to be pressing these and I have the seam allowance um, underneath the shoulder, not in the sleeve area. It wants to sit that way naturally and I think it helps gives a nice sharp corner here, which is what it looks like on the pattern envelope. So I think that's what the designers are intending. So what I have underneath here, if you've never seen it before, for sleeve heads, this is just a pressing mitt, you know, the uh, iron pressing mitt doesn't, I think it costs like 350 or something. I don't even know. I got mine at Waywalk, but I got a couple bookends in here and it holds it upright really nicely. So this is the perfect shape for sleeve heads that I have found. And so I'm just going to drape my sleeve head on top of the mitt. It's squeaking today for some reason. And so um, I will be using a lot of steam, but I have the camera right on top. So just pretend there's steam going on here. And I'm steaming and pressing and steaming and pressing like this. And then once it's hot and moist, then I can just kind of push my hands on it, rub my hands on it, and, and smooth anything out that needs to be. So let me go ahead and do that off camera because Steam and my camera don't get along very well together. Okay, so here she is. Um, this is for my daughter who has shorter arms than I do, so it wouldn't fit me perfectly if I was to wear it. But I want to give you a good idea of what it looks like. The shoulders are lovely back collar. What's nice about this is it is so light because there is no interfacing, no double layers, you know, it's single layer of everything, um, which is interesting, but it's lovely. So I'm going to be visiting her. If I can get a snapshot of her wearing it, I will post it while I am out in Arizona. So there you go. I hope you like it. I will be making the dress also. Um, and so I'll take you through step by step of the dress. Yeah. See you later. Bye bye. We have city strike. Horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sew and spin. And move the horses in to the barn. Then time to move them out again. Red parchment pastures, beautiful my houses. 
The viewers each day when I arise This light pleases me As it is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life